I'm going to listen to uh, this Necrid video, his experience playing Genshin for the first time in 2023, which is definitely going to uh, convince me to not play this game. I'm sure he's going to have some warnings for me and he's going to have some insights that will tell me that it's a very bad idea and then I should stop while, quit while I'm ahead and not get uh, in, in too deep anymore. Just stop thinking about all the characters. That's what I'm expecting uh, from this video. We're in 2023. <laughs> I, I think we are, unfortunately. Yeah. All right, let's see. It has no spoilers, no spoilers. So I, I'm safe to watch it. I can't believe I've done it. I played a game that contradicted with the very soul of my being. Nintendogs, but that's not what this video is about. I played Genshin Nintendogs. Impact. Nintendogs! And I survived. And I came out very surprised. Wait, I recognize this guy. Is this the same guy that made that video about the ride MMO? And he was walking around in these uh, pajama pants from Costco the whole time. And I was like, wow. You know, he's walking around in these pajama pants, but this is actually a really well-informed and well-researched video, so I guess I don't really care. Yeah, I remember. I remember. I remember him. After I swapped to Variety, on top of just covering the lore of League of Legends, at the beginning of 2023, I wrote <laughs> down all the universes I wanted to visit. Illidan. And unsurprisingly, Genshin was not one of them. <laughs> I was focusing more on stuff like showing people the book lore of the cyberpunk universe. Or I wanted to check out the horrifying universe of Warhammer. So, why did I decide to play Genshin all of a sudden? Yeah, why? Memes. Specifically, I wanted to have context. I do Every love memes. Every now and then, someone shares a Genshin meme around me. So I just wanted to know what the memes were about. And in a similar way, whenever a new trailer comes out, the entire community gets hyped. So I just wanted to know what the hype was about. I mean, when you have a look at the new character teasers, they have million. dozens of millions of views. This simple trailer for a guy with a spear has 30 million views. I couldn't believe it myself. Somehow that's more than the trailer for the lady who pulls out a sword out of her private parts. But more importantly, that is more <laughs> views than literally any of- Listen, uh, and I know the ladies in the chat are gonna back me up on this, okay? Like, it, it's actually a very handy, like, little pocket to put stuff in. Like, if you've got a push-up bra, or you got, like, you know, a, a lot up there, um, you can just, like, stick stuff in there and pull it out any time it's like an extra storage compartment because they don't give you po like does you think that her dress has pockets no obviously not where the hell else is she gonna pull it from but more importantly that is more views than literally any of the high quality cinematics by blizzard so yeah <laughs> i just wanted to know what the heck is going on Warlord so me. i started playing for context look you can just watch the look, look, I, I, at first, I thought that too. Yesterday, when I looked at the trailer, uh, that had 30 million views, and I was like, oh my god, how could that 30 million views? I thought this was a weeb game. Uh, then you watch the trailer. It doesn't even matter if you know what Genshin Impact is, or if you know anything about the game. Like, the trailer is sick. Like, the trailer itself is just really cool. This is good to watch. It's good entertainment, all on its own, so. And I stuck around for the gameplay, and that is not something I expected. I genuinely expected to do one or two streams where I played this game for the first time. That's what time, I'm gonna do. Yes, I go couple streams. Streaming TFT, but that didn't yeah. happen. What? Somehow the gameplay and the story are no. so strong and so good Wait, that I what? now understand why Genshin is so massive. On top of this, Genshin tripled my views on Twitch. So what am I? Hey! <laughs> He says it tripled his views on Twitch. Money. <laughs> Cha-ching. Time to play Genshin Impact. I'm gonna do not stream Genshin. Anyway, yeah. my first experience with Genshin was quite a wild. Well, I mean, look, even if it, tri if it triples your views and you don't like it, 
then you shouldn't play it, to be honest. You should still prioritize what you find is fun. But apparently, he said he got hooked from... Uh... Is he still playing it right now? Chat. Is Necrit still playing Genshin right now? Right. Absolutely packed with surprises. Because I knew absolutely nothing about Genshin besides it being a gacha game. So gotcha. now, Me too, yeah. let's talk about what playing Genshin for the first time in 2023 was like. All right. And don't worry, for any of you who also never played Genshin, I will not spoil any of the story. I am a lore nerd, I wouldn't dare. Yeah. Also yeah. remember, I, trust I am him. only like 30 hours into the game, which sounds like a lot, but there is easily at least Two weeks 200 ago. hours of content. So even though I will talk about this like a game review, it is still more of an early impression. Okay. Also, beware, there is a lot There's to so talk many about, so the topics will be all There's over the many. place, because oh. as you'll see, Stop everything it. in Genshin is really well interconnected. Let's start with the okay. most important part of any game. Gameplay. Specifically, I will split this into combat and world gameplay, because both of these have so much value, they can easily carry entire games. And that's simply because if the gameplay is not good, nothing else matters. Yeah. Because you won't last long enough to experience the rest. And here, I am glad to say, both are quite stellar. Starting with the combat. At first, it may seem like the combat is a bit basic. You have a basic attack combo. A charge Deluxe. attack for holding down the attack button. A dash with some invincibility frames. A basic ability. And an ultimate ability. Can you roll dodge? That's it. But the fun begins Whoa. when you start throwing in other... Wait! A phoenix? Combo. A charged attack for wait, holding wait, wait, down wait. the attack button. A dash with some invincibility frames. A basic ability. And an ultimate ability. Nice. That's it. But the fun begins when you start throwing in other characters. Boy. Because this game is all about swapping them in the middle of the combat. You see, as you're on your adventure, you fill your party with four characters which you can swap in and out at any point during the game, except in the dungeons. And each of these characters wields a different element. There are seven in total. There is Pyro, Geo, Dendro, Animo, Hydro, Cryo and Electro. Turn that into a wrap. And these elements interact with each other in some really cool ways. First of all, it is not exactly like it is in Pokemon, where some types have super effects against other types. Mm -hmm. Because here, the two elements always react in both ways. Uh, swirl is like a tornado. Absorbs the first element it comes in contact with and deals elemental damage. Affects beings. Oh my gosh, this is too much. Oh, I can't. It's too much. Too much. I don't understand. I'll have to uh, just burn stuff and see what makes it burn more. This is the only thing. Like, if it's crystallized, does it burn more? Probably. If it's swirling, it burn more? Yeah, I, I bet. Uh, if you burn it, you can melt ice. If you burn it, you can vaporize the water. If you burn it, you can... Uh, yeah, fire is going to be the answer to all your problems here. Meaning that just as water is strong against fire, so is Wait, fire what? strong against water because it can vaporize it. The only so better, so fire better. Difference yeah. here is that the reaction one way may be stronger than the reaction the other way. Also, when it comes to damage immunities, it is simple. Enemies are always immune to their own element. Okay. That's it. But besides this, besides just damage multipliers, all of the elements have really unique interactions. Normally, a frost ability is going to slow the enemy. But if you make them wet first, you can freeze them with a frost ability. After which, you can shatter them with a geo ability. Or yeah! you can cover them with plants, which is gonna make them burn better. Or you can set them on fire and overload the plasma with an electric ability. Or how about you set the ground on fire and send a tornado through it so that it becomes a fire tornado. And can you um, turn someone into ice and then burn them so hard that they vaporize? Like, um, <laughs> 
how do you overload them even even more? Yes. Recently, uh, I discovered a lovely combo where I can use a dendro ability on water, which is gonna spawn seeds around, which I can ignite and make them blow up. What? It is insane how well all of these nice. elements play together. I like and that. during combat, setting up all of these combos is so much fun. It I'm makes exploding. every combat flow like a proper anime fight where a group is working together to defeat the enemy. I really have nothing bad to say about the combat. It works beautifully. Just remember that all of these element combinations also work against you. So the enemies will often be paired against Bubble. you with synergies. Expect a lot of hydro mages paired with frost mages, which is gonna make your life awful. But you see, since elements are the core of Genshin's world, they are used in more ways than just in combat. So let's have a look at what the gameplay loop looks like outside of fighting. Have I'm... you ever played Breath of the Wild? No. Yeah, at this point pretty much everyone knows where Genshin stands. When Genshin was first released only three years ago, I thought this game was a lot older. I remember a lot of people made videos making fun of Genshin for being a cheap clone of they Breath of the Wild. They admitted to it though. They because said... Genshin really did start as a clone of Breath of the Wild. That was before Genshin embraced the elements which gave the game its own spin. And okay. yes, after playing both games, I can confirm, it is hard not to draw the line as they are the same down to running around, opening chests, having very similar enemies, climbing, gliding, leveling up your stamina so you can last longer, and so on. Genshin is nearly identical in- But we watched the video the other day where the devs just said, yeah, we drew heavy inspiration from Breath of the Wild, but they also- wanted to make it a lot more anime too so they also drew heavy inspiration from anime styles so i mean many ways oh. which is good but i didn't These play days, rest of the most, world that much if so. not all modern successful games take an already existing idea and make it better league of legends was a yeah. warcraft mod fortnite was a minecraft mod TFT came from a Dota mod. Valorant came from Counter-Strike, which was a Half-Life mod. These modders should have been paid a lot of money by now. And in this case, Genshin came from Breath of the Wild. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I always try to promote and support the idea of the diversity in a space, like diversity in a genre, because different companies can draw on good ideas that other games had. And at the end of the day, it benefits players. It benefits players that companies can take a piece from here, take a piece from there, and put it all together into something that um, we can all enjoy. You said it's like but FX of E started heavily inspired by WoW and became much more its own thing later. Yeah, like it might even start um, having been very influenced by some other major game in the market. But then over time, as it grows and it gains its own steam and it gains its own identity, it differentiates itself from other stuff and starts to do things its own way. And uh, I assume that is what Genshin has done. But personally, uh, I'm going to be honest, I didn't play Breath of the Wild very much at all. So I feel like a lot of this is going to feel extremely fresh to me. And I'm not always going to be able to tell uh, what was from Breath and what was wild. And I'm totally fine with this. There is no shame in taking an idea and making it better. But I have to say, from what I remember, people were really harsh at Genshin at first before it forged its own path. Anyway, when it comes to gameplay, since they are standing on the shoulders of a giant, the base gameplay loop is amazing. At least for me, so far, I hope it doesn't get too repetitive. Right? You what? go out into the world, you pick your main quest, which gives you a basic direction, but from that point on, you can explore anything at any time. Which is really cool on its own. If you see something awesome in the distance, you can just go there. Yes, maybe the enemies will be a bit higher level, but you absolutely have the freedom to do anything. I fought a level 37 boss with my level 3 squad. What? Or at least I tried. Oh. Although in hindsight, you can totally <laughs> okay. defeat all the bosses from the very beginning. In this sense, it's kind of like Dark Souls. You just have to learn the pattern. 
With that said, while unlimited exploration is a really cool aspect... He says, yeah, you can fight any enemy at level 1, just don't get hit, 5-head. <laughs> yeah, it's just like Dark Souls, like, you don't need to put any points into vitality, you just don't get hit, just don't get hit. Just learn the attacks and don't get, don't get attacked. A lot of games crumble underneath it because they don't encourage exploration in a good way. And in the case of Genshin, it is done in a scarily amazing way. Throughout the world, pretty much everywhere, you can find little chests. These chests give you a bunch of weaker loot, maybe some crafting material, but Ooh, most purple. importantly, account experience. What's purple? You get a smaller amount for small chests and a bigger amount for bigger chests. And you want to level up your account, or as they call it, the adventure level or adventure rank, because the entire progression of the game is locked behind it. First of all, the main storyline requires a certain adventure rank to continue. Meaning that if you want to play the main story, you better go exploring. But also, your characters have certain limitations which- But how much XP can you get just from doing the main story? Like, just from following the main story? Are there going to be periods where it's very difficult to get to the next level you need for the main story and it's going to take a really long time to like? Because, um... When I first started playing Final Fantasy XIV, it's not like this anymore, but when I first started, there was this period of time when I got to like level 34, where I had to go out and get XP from other sources before I could proceed with the main story. And this meant that I had to go farm Brayflock's dungeon, like, over and over and over and over. It was really, really bad. <laughs> it was so bad. They fix Brave Flocks too. Kids today don't know how bad it was. Do an old Brave Flocks. It's like five or six times in a row and the tank just stands with the dragon in the green shit on the ground and the dragon's healing itself. And I'm like, you gotta move the dragon out of the shit on the ground. And the tank's like, don't tell me what to do. You don't pay my sub. Kids today will never know what that was like. The exploration, you said the exploration is the best part, so it doesn't matter. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. You get everything you need. Just playing the game naturally. Unlock at certain okay. adventure ranks. Right. The same goes for leveling weapons and so on. So you want to explore and open chests so you can continue on the main progression. But you know, even in this case, freely running around and opening chests isn't really the main driving force of this system. After what I said, it still may sound boring. Because the key is in the way you find these chests. Okay. First of all, the exploration itself is fun. You uh. have the ability to climb anything, you have the ability to glide anywhere. These two simple abilities make traversing landscape a lot more interesting. And it means the world design can also play with verticality. But the way the chests are hidden also matters. Some of them are just randomly found at different places. Some of them are in camps of monsters locked behind killing everything. But a lot more are hidden behind clever puzzles. And let me tell you, oh, no. these puzzles oh, are no. literally everywhere. No. Have you ever seen what the Breath of the Wild map looks like with all the hidden secrets? Yeah, Genshin is exactly the same. And these puzzles come in a very impressive number of shapes and sizes. From guiding a ghost thingy back to its shrine, <laughs> to lighting up suspiciously placed torches, to hitting stones with corresponding elements, to picking randomly placed carrots, Carrot. to hitting suspiciously placed rocks, to blowing wind at the wind thingy, to doing specific timed challenges, to simply finding a chest at the most improbable place imaginable. I could go for a very long time here. The point is, there is an insane amount of secrets. And the chances are, if a pebble on the ground looks suspicious, it is most likely a puzzle. The best part about this is that when you open a chest, all you have to do is look into the distance and you can see eight Look more. for the carrots. This creates an amazing loop of exploration, where look you stay carrot. up at two in the morning Got thinking it. to yourself, yeah, I'll go for another chest. Uh-oh. Oh, it's four in the morning. On top of just chest hunting, there is a lot more to explore for. Each region also has its own I'm not gonna get addicted around. to doing that. These can be turned in at the big statues of each region, which increases your stamina. Exactly like in Breath of the Wild. Which of course helps you with climbing longer and gl- Listen, I'm not- 
it's all good and nice and sounds really good and well and fine that you can fly anywhere and you can go all over the place and you can drop you can glide anywhere and you have all this verticality and you can climb up the mountain and you can go all these different places yeah that's all nice and everything but for someone like me it is actually not good <laughs> because um i have a tendency to get to get lost in open world games i have a very bad habit of i will go off track like way off like, way off where i'm not supposed to be at all i think that this map could be chock full of shit to do and puzzles and little chests and camps and everything i will find the one spot in the map where there is nothing <laughs> and i will get lost there i will get stuck there this is what's gonna happen Hiding further, you also want to look for crafting materials. This can be anything from branches to apples, or it can be mining stones, or even elemental plants. These rare flowers have to be picked in a very specific way. For example, if you want to pick up a frosty flower, you have to warm it up, once again playing into the idea of using elements. Speaking of which, I should also mention that yes, elements are widely used in the open world. Wind usually helps you with gliding, Yay! but even if you want to simply cook, you have to start a fire yourself. And if you want to walk on water, frost abilities may help you. Or they can be pain in the ass. And the weather matters too. Good luck cooking if it is raining, but also oh, that's cool. if it is raining, everyone is permanently wet. And you know that's awesome. what that means for electric users. Okay, that's you great. You might also find yourself in the middle of a storm where lightning is randomly hitting stuff around you or directly you. All of this creates an amazing loop outside of just combat. And so far, I believe this is a major reason why Genshin is successful. If you think about it, the reason why the hook is so good is because in a lot of ways, Genshin plays like a modern MMO. Even though the main idea of an MMO is the what? massive multiplayer part, these days most people play MMOs solo. They treat them like single player RPGs, but they like the idea of a shared world. And this is the core of Genshin. It is a great solo RPG. But you won't see other people in the, in the world. So how is it a shared world? I don't, I don't know, like, I don't, I don't know if I follow this point, because he says it's like a, it plays like a modern MMO, and that modern MMOs are not like MMOs nowadays, they're, they're more like single player games. <laughs> so, how is that? Oh, co-op, you can do co-op, you can invite up to three people anytime. So you can, it has a multiplayer functionality, like, you can have people come in. The illusion of the MMO. Other players are just NPCs to you anyway. <laughs> You can let up to three other friends join your world. Okay. But that's the maximum. I see, okay. PG first, but you have the option to play co-op with anyone whenever you want, be it for dungeons or exploration. Good RPGs also have to have good RPG mechanics. So let's talk about those. On top of your adventure rank, you also individually level up all your characters He's saying that people want the MMO experience without actually having to be social. So that's just like a really vast open world RPG. Um, honestly, with my experience with Final Fantasy XIV, I, I personally feel like it shines the most as, like through the story, yeah, but through the rating content, like the hardcore rating content. So it's a little bit column A, little column B with me with Final Fantasy, but the, with Final Fantasy XIV, and the one thing, I think my probably one of my biggest complaints about that game, even though I love that game to death and I'll always be playing it, the biggest complaint about it is the open world. I always felt like the open world felt really uh, empty, that you go and explore it for the story and maybe you'll do a little bit of it to rank up your shared, to do fates, out in the world but outside of that i never felt like there were enough reasons to get out there uh yeah there's gathering and there's hunts but i just don't think that people are incentivized that much to go and explore just for the sake of exploring and to find like little hidden treasures and things like that so that's something about genshin that i'm hearing i like a lot um 
for me, I think the reason I fell in love I fell in love with MMOs in the first place. Actually, the reason I fell in love with games overall ever was because I love this idea of falling into a virtual, a huge virtual world and exploring it. This place that feels like you're transported into another land. It's like the closest thing we have to being spirited away pretty much is video game worlds. And uh, that's why like as a, as a child, Zelda games captivated me immediately because I just could not believe it. And that's why World of Warcraft captivated me. It just seemed like a, a portal into some other place. And this is such an amazing thing that video games can offer us. And so for me, whenever a video game doesn't like capitalize that on that enough and utilize that enough, it seems like a little bit of a lost opportunity. Characters with special XP items which you also find in all the chests, giving you yet another reason to explore the world. After reaching yeah. a certain level cap, you have to ascend them by using special... And I'm sorry, I'm trying to like not pause him literally every five seconds. <laughs> but that's one thing that I thought uh, Guild Wars 2 did extremely well. Really, really well, is the open world. The open world of Guild Wars 2 is fantastic. And uh, it just showed me what is possible. It showed me how much more it can be used to help you feel immersed in it and in like part of it and making decisions based on the environment around you. That's the thing that I really like so far hearing about uh, Genshin is like, you can set the grass on fire. You know, if it's, if it's raining, then this is gonna affect electric spells. It makes you feel like more connected. It's not just the setting this sterile setting that like, okay, it looks a little different, but it's not actually gonna matter <laughs> that much. It might as well be a, a an empty box that you're fighting in, you know? So crafting material to increase the level cap. The brilliance in this is that the items used for the ascensions are different between all characters. And the items themselves can be crafted at an alchemy table, they come from specific enemies in the outside world, or they come from dungeons and bosses. The game even tells you which items drop from which dungeon, so you always know what to farm. Which reminds me, we didn't even talk about the dungeons. I noticed there are two kinds. Either it is a small dungeon with shuffled rooms, or it is just an arena where you have to defeat enemies in time. In some ways, these are pretty much the same to the dungeons in Breath of the Wild. Except Genshin doesn't use physics for their interactive puzzles. But from what I've seen, the pre-made room-based dungeons aesthetically change based on where you are. And that still makes them quite cool. Also, this is where yet another cool system is added in. Based on your party composition, you also get special bonuses. If you have two members of the same element, they amplify each other. But if you have four members where each is a different element, that also gives you a different buff. So when you're doing dungeons, your team composition matters. Uh, I bet one of these is better than the other ones. I bet one of these is meta. <laughs> uh, I guess it probably depends on the dungeon, like who you're going to be fighting in there. Like if you're going to be fighting a crap load of pyro enemies, then you probably would want the soothing waters, right? There's two. Anyway, back to the characters. Besides leveling them up, if you get multiple of the same characters from the gacha system, instead of getting duplicates, you can unlock their constellations, which are extra passive bonuses for their abilities. Speaking of which, a bit later in the game, you can also level up your abilities. Then, on top of that, there are also weapons. Not only do all the weapons have different RPG stats, which you can increase by disenchanting your other weapons. I'm looking at how complicated the stats are on this. <laughs> like, I would definitely play games where it was very hard to tell what an upgrade is because of all the complicated stats on it. This doesn't look that complicated. But each weapon also has a unique passive ability, which you can upgrade by merging multiple of the same weapons together. On top of Courage. that, each weapon also has a level cap. And you also ascend your weapons the same way you do your characters. And raising the level cap also changes the weapon's aesthetics to indicate that they are more powerful. Which was a pleasant surprise the first time I saw this. Now on top of that, 
every uh -oh. character can That's also equip five artifacts. These give you more stats, but they also have more passive abilities. In most cases, it is two and four set bonuses. And these can get really crazy, especially when you realize that each character can scale with different stats. Some may need attack damage and crit, others gain damage from defense, or they heal based on their maximum health. I also, can't get yes, hung up on this stuff. that Genshin has a variation of the Golden Trinity. Although here they pretty much only have DPS and supports. At first sight... I'm just like... I am not going to get too hung up on all this like little upgrade materials and crap like that because I know that if I start to get too worried about it, then I'm going to end up swiping. And this is a bottomless pit I absolutely do not want to go down at all. If you have a look at all of these systems, it may seem a bit confusing. And that's because at first sight, it is. But after you learn how all the different systems work, you get to see how well integrated they all are. And you also get to see how deep your character progression is. There is about a dozen different systems all about leveling up. Wait, you said actually you can't swipe for artifacts. Oh. It's hard to swipe for this. You can't swipe for that. Oh. Okay. Okay. The only thing you can swipe for are the primos. Vulcan Loss, thank you for the Euro support. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Artifacts don't matter till you finish leveling, and talents aren't worth upgrading till you're. Ha How long does it take me to level up? How long is that going to take me? Really? <laughs> Can swap and get X three times more chances to get artifacts, but still RNG at the end. Uh huh. Forever. <laughs> um okay it'll take an eternity for me to level okay that sounds about right Rome thanks for the sub uh are you dead gaming thanks for subbing as well gathering materials and ascending your characters but they all work together as a single unit and from a game designer's point of view honestly that's pretty impressive. So now, let's see what other activities you can do with your jacked up characters. Okay. While you are out there exploring the world, which is the majority of the gameplay loop, you also get to do quests. Now, unless you are doing the big bah. story quests, they are usually bah. very simple. That's Kali, you go I remember somewhere, her. You kill something, you go back. I and like really, her. Really, it's because it all ties together with the entire exploration scheme. Because on your way to the quest, you're gonna open about 30 chests. But don't be fooled by the simple word, quests. In reality, the entire list of activities is massive. And each kind of content is slightly different. There is no way I can talk about all of them individually. So besides just exploration, this is all the other stuff the game offers you. At least, this is all the stuff I experienced. I don't even know what's in the end game. I'm pretty sure there's gonna be a lot more stuff as I level up. Anyway, there is daily commissions, city reputation commissions, okay. boss tracking bounty quests, okay. weekly quests, main okay. quests, story Wait, quests, story quest. world, quests world quests, randomly spawned world quests, daily Actual... world quests, limited world. events, browser world. minigames, character world. progression quests, dating sim, apparently, and yeah. battle progression, battle pass, which actually has a lore and it got its own cinematic, mini dungeons, replayable boss fights, Spiral Abyss, which is a roguelike dungeon crawler sprinkled on top of all of this. It's like Torghast. Wait, 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 what? No! <laughs> I knew the jailer was responsible for this shit, too. He was behind it all. Why would you? I thought y'all said there weren't any Genshin spoilers in this video. What the fuck, chat? But good. And I'm only like 30 hours in. I know there is a lot more. Apparently you can also catch wild animals, which I haven't seen yet. <laughs> but good. I also keep seeing pools of fish, but I haven't figured out how to fish. Not to mention that there is also player housing, which I haven't unlocked yet. And on top of that, they have their own entire playable card game. Just like Gwent in The Witcher. You can even just run around and talk no. to different random NPCs and they will give you random items. 
it is insane how much content there is. It feels like every other adventure rank you unlock a brand new system. But because it is slowly fed to you, you don't get overwhelmed. And also, the game gives you a daily limit so that you don't burn out. There are these... I don't know, I feel pretty overwhelmed already. You know, I haven't... <laughs> it sounds really overwhelming, but maybe it's just because he's explaining it all really fast. And he says that when I counter all these things one at a time, that I'm not going to feel overwhelmed. But I don't know about that. I get overwhelmed fairly easily. <laughs> I'm not so sure about that, Chief. We will have to see. But it does. it definitely seems like more than I could say grace over moon thingies which replenish decently quickly over time. So far they don't really feel like a malicious design. Even though these days with Fun. modern mobile Get. games it is pretty obvious it feels like a mobile game mechanic that makes you wait. Unless you decide to pay. Well, but it honestly doesn't feel that I'm way. I'm totally not the gonna pay. that the dungeons and the world bosses consume this currency. I believe not it is lot. 40 per boss and 20 per dungeon. So it totally acts not. like a limit to the bigger loot you can get, with the bigger loot being the material for leveling up. So it's not like you are missing out on getting pulls for the gacha system. Overall, it doesn't feel too different to something like the heroic dungeon cooldowns from WoW. Overall, it is amazing how everything fits together so well, especially how the quests lead you to accidental exploration. What also helps with the consumption is that all the main quests as well as all the story quests are fully narrated. Which brings us Wait, what? to the next part. Wait, all the quests are all fully voice acted? Everything. No way. Is it? Not true. He says, someone says no, it's not true. Not every single quest. The main story, but not everything. Okay, only important ones, not side quests. Chat says only may only important and main story quests are voice acted. I mean that's look. I really do think just you know, obviously coming from Final Fantasy Fourteen, <clears throat> this is a game that people really love for its main story. Like it's often touted as like the number one reason that you should absolutely play Final Fantasy XIV and I agree. Like you need to play the main story. Everybody needs to play the main story, it's fantastic. But so much of it is still not voice acted. Like a lot of it is still not voice acted. And I guess that was fine like back in Realm Reborn when they were just trying to throw, fix the game and like have something that was decent to try to save the disaster that the game was. But now we're like, even with new expansions, not everything is voice acted still. Like with the, I feel like raid stories need to be voice acted. Trial stories need to be voice acted. Um, in the modern gaming space, it just feels like uh, really unusual for a story-based game to not have an, like at least all main story, at least all, every single main story quest to be voice acted. Let's talk about the story of this game. But again, no real spoilers, I will only talk about generic stuff. For someone who had no expectations at all, mm -hmm. I came out pretty surprised. It is true that for some people the first impressions may be rough. And that's for two reasons. Okay. First of all, at the beginning you get introduced to Paimon, your companion who is going to stick with you for the entire journey. And you immediately realize she's not the sharp Oh. Edge. Edge. It's time for an edge. It's gonna be right now. You said the FF14 devs are getting too complacent. Place with tour. Every single quest is voice acted. I never played it, but that would be fun to play someday. You know what, chat? It is actually not that bad that uh, I was obsessed with World of Warcraft and then obsessed with Final Fantasy XIV for most of my life because this means that there's a lot of games, incredible games, that I never played that I'll now be able to play for the first time here on stream. So in a way, it's kind of a, it, it's a blessing that there's so many things like I would, uh, I'd love to be able to share these first time experiences with you. Like I had never played Bioshock, for example. That's a game I would really love to play. 
I've never played. I just there's countless. There are countless uh, game stories that everybody's played. Everybody knows about, but I don't. It would be fun. Uh, Switch War Story is unironically amazing. No good end game content, but great for a playthrough. You said, you're right, though. More, more voicing wouldn't be too bad for Final Fantasy 14. They make enough to do it, don't you? Yeah, it feels like they, they do make enough to do it. They should be able to do it. I don't know why they don't. It just, it just seems like they're trying to save money. Uh, have you played Minecraft? No, actually. Have you played Persona? I played a lot of Persona 5. But I got a little bit discouraged when I realized that the game was just very, 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 very long. Okay, the ads are gone. Okay, the ads are gone. So let's uh, back up here a little Next bit. Next part. Let's talk about the story of this game. But again, no real spoilers. I will only talk about generic stuff. For someone who had no expectations at all, I came out pretty surprised. It is true that for some people, the first impressions may be rough. And that's for two reasons. Why? First of all, at the beginning, you get introduced to Paimon, your companion who is going to stick with you for the entire journey. And you immediately realize she's not the sharpest tool in the shed. But that's by design. Your main <laughs> character is silent. They don't I mean, speak that in any good? of the major conversations. So Paimon has to be dumb so that everyone keeps explaining things to her, which is how the main character learns <laughs> about everything. I mean, it's pretty smart. It's also like... <laughs> I feel like a lot of times in games, and RPGs especially, they want you to feel like special they want you to feel like the the cock of the walk pretty much and so to do that they try to like pump you up a little bit and like make you feel like you're the hero you're here to save the day and you're the best right and maybe you know having paimon just be dumb as shit it's gonna make you feel better in comparison like no matter who you are no matter how dumb you are already, uh, there's just no way that you're going to be more dumb than this character. So everybody's going to feel good about themselves. That's pretty smart. She is basically a conduit for the story. But that doesn't take away from the fact that at times... I don't even want to finish the sentence. But the good thing is that over time it grows on you. Wait, what is it? Wait, what sentence do you want to finish? Silent. They don't conversations. So Paimon has to be dumb so that everyone think keeps I've explaining things to her, it too much. which is how the main character learns about everything. I mean, she it's is good... basically a conduit for the story. But that okay. doesn't take away from the fact that at times... I don't even want to finish the sentence. But the good thing is that over time it grows on you. What's she doing? Hmm, okay. And it gets saved when other characters get thrown in. So you get to listen to more people than just her. Speaking of which, let's quickly mention the voice acting. While a lot of people prefer the Japanese or the original Chinese voiceover, I am a humble European who enjoys an English dub with English subs. And let me tell you, since Paimon is the first character you get to meet, it feels a little bit like a punch in the guts. However, it all very quickly turns around. And now okay. I can safely say the English dub is definitely good enough to not stand in the way of the story. And a bit later on, the English dub can get amazing. But over time, you are definitely gonna find some characters whose voices you're gonna hate. Also, for some reason, literally every single person in my chat knew... So, Paimon has is annoying her voice gets higher and higher as the game goes on pylon is the proxy voice for your main character so by her being stupid things have to be explained to you which is how you the player learn about the world i mean it's a it's a brilliant exposition tactic that's good i don't really remember no yeah i think like two years ago i played the game for like an hour or less 
and I really don't remember. Paimon's voice is like nails on a chalkboard. It lowers over time. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I played Night Fae in World of Warcraft. I think I can handle anything. She's just like another Night Fae. Any Night Fae character sounds like that. The, the voice actor of Lisa is the same as Evelyn. I'm scared to learn how all of you learned about this. Again, I have to add that the voice acting starts a little bit That's lower and then it stuff. gets better as you move away from Genshin 1.0. Because Genshin 1.0 has an amazing feature. Nobody knows how to pronounce the foreign names. Liyue, Liyue, guiding us on how to run Liyue for the coming year. To think I've lived in Liyue all these years and never come to see this before. <laughs> what did he say? I don't know what he said, but he did not say Liyue. To freedom as Liyue is to contracts. Liyue has a strong focus on business and trade. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, that's voice. Ouch. Um. That's that. I mean, that, that might be that might be rough. Okay. That, yeah. Uh, it sounds like that could. <laughs> that could grate on you over time. Uh, listen to that could be, that, yeah. You think I'll, it'll grow on you? Okay. You think I'm going to get a Stockholm Syndrome about it? <laughs> okay. You're saying Liyue are way too Liyue many times. Kissing, the seven leaders of the seven enterprises of Liyue hold true control over Liyue. <laughs> what about Liyue? It is super clear Liyue. at the beginning they didn't know that Liyue. Genshin would be a massive hit. So when it came to localization, they didn't even have a director for the English dub. It is obvious they just took the script, they sent it to the voice actors, maybe gave them a few notes, and that was it. Nobody gave them directions on proper pronunciation, and they just accepted it the way it came back. Which resulted in every single character pronouncing the name Liwe in a very different way. Anyway, yes, the voices get better over time, so... I mean, you should just give them a, you know, give them a little bit of Liwe with it, because they... <laughs> They didn't know how to pronounce it, so they can uh, say it any way that they want to. Now, let's move back to the story. Simply said, the story is very good. At least after you realize that it is written like an anime, which is very different from traditional storytelling. Normally, a classic story has a hero who has a problem, there is a twist, a solution, a conclusion. That's the base form of writing a story. But yeah. animes are structured a bit differently. Most of them are about groups of people where everyone has unique quirks. And they band together and they fight big bad. And along the way they get a lot of princess is in another castle moments. But not only is that to keep animes running longer, but it also serves the purpose of giving the characters more room for a build up. And any anime fan can tell you that build up is very important because the payoff is what gives you the memorable moments. In animes, it is usually a big fight between two characters, both of which also had a lot of room to grow up. And I'm happy to say, after you realize this is exactly what Genshin is doing, you'll see that the story gets pretty good. And they also use the classic way to structure their characters the way animes do. Every character usually has a very powerful quirk, but they also have a comedic negative one. In That's Genshin, good. this is something you'll start noticing after the first introduction chapter. And somehow they pull this one off really well for their characters too. So basically- I'm really happy to hear that because uh, like seeing so many super cute, adorable characters that like have magical powers and stuff, you, I, I did ha kind of have this concern that there might be a bunch of characters who are just like Mary Sue type characters and don't actually have any real flaws and just, are amazing and perfect in, in every way and that's that can be incredibly dull 
I find that to be incredibly dull and especially because you're, it's like the same thing over and over and over again. And so hopefully most of the characters you meet in this game are not going to be like that or it will definitely end up feeling really repetitive. Another thing I would say is that uh, the I've heard that anime and like Japanese uh, RPGs tend to focus more on emotional developments like emotions leading the narrative rather than like the plot developments like events happening it's more like a, a, it can more often be about an emotional journey do you think that that holds true for Genshin compared to some other western games it really gets better every uh very fast at the beginning hour or two oh, okay well, <laughs> when I played two years ago, I uh, I quit at, after about an hour. I spent literally one hour in the game and that was all. I never thought about it again, but I wasn't really that, I wasn't that motivated to play either. He said, I think Genshin shares the same issue FF14 does. The first arc is a bit rough. Oh, do we have Realm Reborn Syndrome? Do we have Realm Reborn Syndrome? Who wants to get their footing? They're fantastic. Okay, well, we'll see. We'll see. Basically, it is one big anime and it works. I assume that's why the Genshin anime was already locked in. Personally, when is that? without spoilers, I only finished fighting the first big boss. And Wait, when is the Genshin anime? I gotta, I gotta find out right now. They haven't, they have not communicated an official release date for the series yet. That it was announced in 2022. Oh, how long do you think it will be? Like, okay, estimate. Generally, when what do you have any idea? Does anyone know? <laughs> Soon. Okay. Imagine not being caught up on Genshin before the anime. Yeah. Anime takes a long time. Uh, two or three years, you think? Oh, man. 2030. Okay. Dang. Got to the teaser. Okay, remind me after this. I closed off the first chapter, and the cutscene you get after that, which starts the next chapter, immediately hooked me in. In fact, after that, the story started ramping up rapidly. And that's both on the serious side and on the comedic side. Oh. Remember, animes like to combine both to keep the story fresh throughout the entire journey. And for those of you who already know Genshin, I just wanted to tell you, I did the perfume quest. Oh my god. So far, Genshin doesn't seem to be afraid of big twists either. And from what I've been told, it gets even better. Although I... Where, where did he have to put his hand for the perfume quest? Is this it? Is this the one? Clean all the stains? Is that? Okay. All right, well. I have to point out that throughout the entire story, there are dialogue options. But 99% of them don't matter. And when they do matter, they only skip... What kind of a scene was that? Did you see it? <laughs> Listen, if you got stains like that on your rug, you need to roll the thing up and just... Uh, <laughs> take it outside and burn it. Okay, put that in the burn pile. Um... There's no coming back from that. Like, do not take it to the dry cleaner. Do not just, just, it's, it's a, find a new rub. Buy, it's time to buy a new rub. Like a really boring short quest before the story goes back onto its Oh rails. my, what In most the... cases, your dialogue options only affect Gosh. the very next sentence in the dialogue, after which it immediately snaps back. I would say this sounds- Wait a minute, there's a housemaid there. What the hell is she doing? What? Was she just staying in there? <laughs> okay. But for me, the fourth wall was already broken down by some other games. In fact, even though Mass Effect was always praised for its conversations, you would be surprised how often they do it as well. It is simply just illusion of choice. Anyway, if you're like me and you're in for a good story, so far I feel confident 
it seems like that's what we will get here. Anyway, I should call out a really good feature for all the story lovers. The game allows you to replay conversations from all of the main stories at any time, which makes it very easy to go back and look for something. Oh, so in case you want to uh, listen to Paimon when she's not talking, you can just go back into the menu and listen to her anytime. That that's great. Yeah, I was after I heard Paimon's voice, I was a little worried that I wouldn't hear her talking nonstop. But uh, in case she ever stops talking, I'll be able to just uh, click play here and hear her talking some more. So that's that's fantastic. I'm sure the stream is gonna love that. But of course, if you know me, you know I like explaining the difference between lore and yeah, that's really story. Good. Where a story is focusing on an individual, but the lore tells you the story of the entire universe. And in this case, Genshin has some amazing ways to reveal their lore. You can find pretty much everything you may need in your journal. Not only does this act as an amazing model viewer, but when you inspect each model, the game also gives you a large description of the enemies. And this is where you can find some really interesting lore nuggets. But the monsters are not the only ones who get this treatment. You can also go to critters and find their lore too. This is amazing! Crab lore? I mean, these crabs have more lore than some forgotten champions in- I don't believe this. League of Legends? I don't believe this. Look, I can read it, okay? It's a crab. What do you think it is? It says, okay, it snaps his claws. Okay, he's got a little shell. Some of them are docile. Okay, some of them are angry. That's- it. What, what the hell else is there about the crab? Like, I don't- What are they doing? They just- they, Okay, they have raves on the beach. They, uh, <laughs> they, they party. They like they dance a lot. Um, some of them are, are giant and enemies. Okay, I, I, I don't know. And after that one, how about we jump into the weapons? All of which get a short description, but then you notice there is a more button, which gives you a lot more lore. And the same goes for artifacts, crafting materials, and even food. There's a lore about this rock. There's a... You can write, you can read the whole lore article about... I, I, I doubt it. Okay. I don't food. believe him. Food has its own lore. In this regard, digging into the hidden lore of Genshin is not too different from the Soul series. So the reason why the universe of Genshin feels so rich is because it is combining the traditional styled anime story with the deep and mysterious world building from, from software, both of which resulted in a pretty interesting world. And now I'm honestly interested to see what I'm gonna find in the future. But now, let's talk about how all of this world building shaped Like the from world. software. For a game that's all about exploration, of course, it has to have an interesting environment. Because climbing and gliding are key parts of traveling, expect a lot of verticality. Whenever you look at the landscape around you- uh, uh, quick question. Are there, is there lore in the game that is like as dark and messed up as anything in Elden Ring? Or in a game like that? Like, really? Worse? Because that's hard to believe. You look at what this game, look at the game. Like, look at the, look. It's anime girls, it's anime booba, it's booty shorts, okay? It's like cutesy stuff. But actually, one thing that, that's what I thought about Final Fantasy XIV too. <laughs> when I first started playing it. A lot of times I've found that games like that, that have this incredibly like sweet, and friendly and soft exterior. Once you dig in really deep in there, you're gonna learn about some of the most fucked up shit imaginable. <laughs> and then you realize that all this other, this like beautiful exterior, this coat of paint, it's really just there to help you cope with it. It's all there just to help you like deal with what you found out. You, you're gonna see a lot of mountains which not only serve as excellent vantage points to see all the treasures from, but they also serve to give you enjoyable glide rides. Besides this, the game also makes sure there is something interesting behind every corner, be it scattered ruins, monster camps, or entire cities. Again, this is by design to fit with the exploration. And here, perhaps the most iconic city is the very first one you get to see, Mondstadt. 
You have probably seen this one already, and it's funny to see how everyone is like, Oh, hey! That's the one themed after a German city. Yeah. The design is so cool. Meanwhile, as a humble European myself, I'm thinking, that's just Central Europe. I'm from Prague, and like, I live here. I'm here right now. <laughs> Another part is how I'm much so the jelly. environment change from region to region. Unfortunately, I, go I have to say the early regions don't really change that much. At first you are in an area with green plains and then you move into an area with slightly more yellow plains. It is only after that that you get some major visual distinction. Again, I am early in the game and I have only seen glimpses of what the game is capable of. And everyone keeps telling me that things go crazy a bit later on. At least early on when you walk into the dungeons you immediately get slapped with some beauty. And the final part of the world design is the graphical take. Yet again, it it's is no so surprise pretty. that the visuals were borrowed so from beautiful. Breath of the Wild. It's so but we shouldn't underestimate how well this works for Genshin. Even though some may think that this is a low poly game with cheap graphics, the reality is exactly the opposite. It's really Even not. though everything has a cartoony texture, the texture is always- Really, if you think this is a low poly game with cheap graphics, you got no fucking idea how gra how graphics are rendered for video games like you literally have no idea what the hell you're talking about really like it's that is a completely dumbass take i haven't heard anyone really say that uh but usually i uh, don't surround myself with people who like can't find their ass with both hands the fact is we watched this video yesterday <laughs> couple days ago where they talked about the art direction of uh, Genshin Impact and like they talked about how there's a different uh, rendering pipeline for the characters for the cell shading for the characters than there is for the environment that they've done on purpose to like uh, differentiate uh, and like make their world more oh, wait, wait a second. unique you said what was the dumbass take oh the dumbass take is to say that it's just like oh it's low poly and cheap graphics in this game that's that is stupid it's just it's just com it is completely incorrect quality which means that when you zoom in you can still see all the details but when you see something at a distance the game can replace all the hd textured models with cheaper pngs without anyone noticing this makes it so that the game can save up on your gpu yeah because in this style a flat image can perfectly mimic a 3d model but I have to point out, this game is still heavy on your CPU, because oh. it is constantly calculating positions in the world. I can talk about Genshin's graphics for days, there is honestly a lot to unpack here. Personally, I love the tiny detail where everything has an ever so slight outline, which mimics hard edges. This is the reason why everything looks like it could be part of a colorized manga. Anyway, the key point is, these are all stylized graphics. Which is something every game that wants to last long should aim for. Stylized graphics simply age better. Look at WoW, League and RuneScape. Compare yeah. them to games that try to go for realism 10 years later. So even though in Genshin's case the graphics just got accidentally good because they were borrowed from Breath of the Wild, the style is doing wonders for them. And yeah. it can easily carry them for the next 10 years. After which the graphics... Yeah, it just doesn't look outdated ever. Age which is why Fortnite got an upgrade. And when it comes to showing age, rest assured, that's something music will never do. From what I've heard when it comes to music, Hoyoverse is exactly the same as something like Blizzard or Riot Games. The game may be good, but the music is always three times better. In Genshin, you're not gonna feel that at the beginning of the game. The music there is really good, but it is more atmospheric which is not the kind of music that becomes an earworm. However, a bit later you get exposed to some brilliance. So far, my two favorite tracks are Combat Beneath Waves, which I had to blindly listen to because it comes from a future area and I didn't want to get myself spoiled, and Beats of Water Drops, which starts with mystical beeps and boops, then the string instruments join in, and then the beat drops. Needless to say, I'm still waiting for all the beauty this game presents. And from the little taste I got, I can't wait. Just like you probably can't wait for the biggest thing of the- Well, I have heard some absolutely incredible music 
from the trailer so far. And I actually wrote down a couple of, when we were watching them, there was a couple of tracks that I really, really loved that I asked chat uh, what the name of it was. I love the track that played during uh, Wanderer. I loved the track that played during uh, the Raiden demo. And there was another one with the Fireworks Girl. I think it was called like Blossoms and Summer, Fire Blossoms and Summer, something like that. That was just phenomenal. Like, I don't want to pause the video to go like hunt it down or anything. But do those play in the game? Or is it just like music that was made only from the demo? This morning, uh, at the start of the stream, we were listening to some of the ambient soundtracks from Genshin, and uh, I enjoyed that quite a lot, too. You said, listen to Fish Summertime Battle Theme. Okay, well, we'll have to do all that a little this later. Game, the character designs. A wise man once said, I know it, you know it, everybody knows it. <laughs> we are doing it all on purpose. It is all one pile of attractiveness Who said to that? Get hooked on the gadget. Never heard anyone say that. And there is a lot of exposed legs everywhere. But the good thing about this is that the devs are absolutely self-aware in this. Exposed which means legs. That oftentimes they can play into it for comedic purposes. Ugh. If you don't know what I'm talking about, this Ugh. game has three kinds of characters: sexy ladies, skinny guys, goblins. That's it. <laughs> so wise, there is no variety here. On one side, this is pretty sad because sometimes I find some badass design on the enemies. And then I realize, yeah, I'll never play as that guy. On that topic, one very popular anime trait is a very old jacked up guy. Come on, Genshin, at least give me that. On the other side, we have... I agree that there should be more variety in the kind of characters that there are. He said, like, literally every single character is a white. And, uh, well, not all, but, like, vast majority. And he said that there's no old people. Like, we need more old people. We need more people that have different, like, physical quirks, different physical traits. Like, just, like differentiate all the different people more like i, I definitely agree like like and he said this buff grandpa would be awesome like imagine one that has like a big ass beard or like more bearded characters how about a male character that's got some hair on his chest for once sometimes i find some badass design on the enemies and then I yeah, realize, like, yeah that looks, that looks good play as that guy on that's that topic bad. one very popular anime trait is a very old jacked up guy come on genshin at least give me that on the other side, we have to give them credit where credit is due. Even though Genshin locked its characters in a box with some really hard limitations for the designs, somehow they still managed to make every character look unique. That is which true. Which is an insane achievement. That is actually true. Then again, true. I only quickly glanced through all the characters because I don't want to get them spoiled. They do also, all Also, I expected like 20 characters. Genshin has like 60. I haven't seen that much, but even so, all the characters seem to have interesting designs. For example, I've seen a lot of characters wearing skirts. Because I assume it synergizes with climbing. But some are wizards, some are knights. I gotta say too, the, the, the boob physics are like hilarious. <laughs> to me. I just watched her jump on this rock and her booba is just shaking and jiggling all over the place. Like... Haven't seen that much, but even so, all the characters seem to have interesting designs. For example, like, I've here, seen a lot of characters go. wearing skirts. Because I... Like... <sighs> if your boob... If this is happening uh, when you jump up on, stop, on top of things, I, I feel like... Um, like your bra might be a little loose. Like you might want to tighten it up a little bit. Uh, just seems unusual to me. <laughs> Gotta keep the cows in the pasture, you know what I mean? Keep the two cows up there in the pasture. They're gonna be wandering all over the yard. If you don't... <laughs> uh, no bra. I mean... I mean, I... I maybe? Maybe? <laughs> assume it synergizes with climbing but some are wizards jelly. some are knights wearing armor underneath that and she's some got are... armor on yeah she's got armor on yeah wait this character has she's wearing armor 
So you're, I, mean, I don't think your boobs would be jiggling around in that. Okay, uh, just, Play more, just a guess. a spear, a bow, a book. That's it. All the characters... Oh, can you imagine? That'd be so cold. <laughs> That'd be colder than a witch's teeth. Characters have to fit one of these. On if your there is team. a character with a shield, they are only ever going to use that shield when they are using their abilities. Outside of that, they are primarily a spear user, so the shield is not going to be permanently out. I find this extremely limiting because that means there are no hammers, no staffs, hammers, staffs. no guns. Even though you can fight enemies that have all of these. But they said that they're going to add the uh, America land like much later on. So maybe whenever they add... Uh, America to the game, there's going to be gun wielders. I mean, I would expect it. It's just they, they haven't added the America yet. At least I can confirm, because there are only five types of weapons, the devs can take their time with designing some really cool looking weapons. Also, I noticed that a lot of characters share the same action <laughs> animations, with only their special abilities and ultimate abilities changing. Except for the five stars. Five star characters have unique animations on everything. And speaking of stars, I think it's time we tackle the elephant in the room. Okay. The gacha system. Uh-oh. When I decided to play this game, I knew very well what I was getting myself into, despite never seriously playing a gacha game before. I knew uh -oh. I had strong will when it comes to spending money, but I still braced myself for all the predatory systems that might try to lure me in. After all, that's what gacha games are known for. And as I played, I found none of it. Now don't get oh? me wrong, the gacha system functions on the very definition of gambling addiction. And that is still here. But outside of that, the game functions as a very good free to play game. You honestly don't have to pay for anything. Okay. And I decided to prove it by beating the game without ever paying a cent. There were definitely points where I thought I found a catch. But every time I snoop around, I find out that there are no real predatory catches. I feel like, you know, right now I feel like we've entered a phase of modern gaming where free-to-play games are not going away. <laughs> this is not going away. The free-to-play and the gamba and the gacha systems is not going to go away. It won't. Um... But I think that probably the best thing to do is to, just like with gambling, encourage people to engage with it in a responsible way. Engage with it in moderation, right? Um, unless you're like me and you're a streamer and it, like you just spend money on it, it could be a tax write-off, but that's different. <laughs> that's different. I mean, you know, like for, for the general user base, uh, you should, you know, be careful with it. Just know what you're getting yourself into and all that. Um, you know, I think it's good to be responsible, you know, gamble responsibly and, and stuff. But, but, but really, in all seriousness, I do think that you need to look at how much pressure is actually being put on the average player. How much psychological pressure is there on you? How far is this cr stuff up your ass? How hard are they trying to get you to swipe all the time? Based on everything that I've heard from everyone that I know, it, the pressure is just not that severe. It's just not that bad. And that is what I'm hearing from him as well. Uh, it's, it just doesn't sound like something that is going to absolutely break the bank. But of course, there's always going to be a risk for people that are prone to gambling addiction that uh, this or anything else can spiral out of control for you. So it's just a thing you need to factor into your risk assessment and your calculus of whether or not you're going to play the game or not. And uh, basically for me, yeah. Uh, do I have an addictive personality? Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> Am I excitable? Well, maybe. Um, I have, you know, I've gambled before, uh, but for me, I I'm very lucky. So it's, it's just different. Yeah, I was, uh, I was born under a lucky star, so uh, I'm going to be fine. And, and anyway, and anyway, I'm going to have Twitch chat watching me to make sure that I don't, um, that, that, that I don't go too far with it. Yeah, Twitch chat's going to be like my chaperone to make sure that I'm responsible. <laughs> That's, what's, that's how I'm going to do it.
For example, around the world there are big statues that heal your party. But these statues can only heal you for a limited amount every day. And I thought that was the catch. This would be the time limiter that would lock you into waiting, unless you pay. But nope, one of the <laughs> core mechanics is cooking, which heals your party. Not to mention that a lot of characters are healers after all. Then I thought that the moon thingies would be the predatory block. And yeah. while I believe there is a way to bypass it with money, farming those materials doesn't seem to be a crucial block. Unless you are at the very end of the game where you likely already beat the game. It seems like all you need is just a little bit of patience and it doesn't even matter. What's also important to mention that Genshin is quite a casual game. There is no PvP and you can beat most of the bosses with any character and any gear. Unless it is time limited, which means you need damage. So while you can definitely say that these mechanics are pay to win, you don't feel encouraged to get into the pay to win scheme. Because okay. you are not forced into competing with anyone. So at the end of the day, all the traps around Genshin Impact are laid around pulling characters. And unfortunately, the hook of this game is so good that once you pay once, you're gonna pay again. It simply encourages you to go for more. They have pity but, mechanics, which means that even though- But, 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 um, but the characters that I really, really need uh, chat said I can just wait for the, the banner to come around and then it's going to be easy for me to get that one. And I don't have to worry about it all the time. Like, um, it's, it's only the, I just wait for the banners. And outside of that, I, I won't have to, I don't want to have to do it, do it a lot. Yeah, it's just, it's not, it's not, it's not. So you got nothing from the pool. The next time you buy, the chances are higher. This is how these games function in general. Statistically, it was proven that all you need to do is pay once for a game. It's After the that, you are for. much more likely to spend more because you already feel invested in the game. And this is why Genshin uh -oh. is extremely dangerous. Oh no. If oh you no. pay for a bad oh no. gacha like game, like you're an idiot. But like Genshin's design is legitimately <laughs> good. You are likely to feel justified to spend money in this game. And that's where you need to be really careful. But again, I am a living proof that you don't have to spend a cent. The base gameplay makes it a- Chat, what are we gonna do if I actually have a problem? <laughs> Okay, but okay, but 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 like we need a we need a like a plan B. Okay, we need like a in case of emergency break glass situation where in case I need an intervention of some kind, like I don't know what we're gonna have to do. <laughs> Get a sponsor. <laughs> oh my god, this <laughs> chat <laughs> chat is like Okay, so if you need an intervention and it's clear that this is out of control, we'll just give you money to keep gambling. <laughs> I said you're supposed to be my chaperone, not my enabler. That's the opposite of what you're supposed- that's, that's the opposite of an intervention really fun RPG without spending any money. And on top of that, I can mention another cool Never thing. Asked to buy life. wishes, which are the core gacha mechanic, you spend a currency it's known horrible. as Primo Gems, which you can get a lot of throughout the game for free. It literally comes from everywhere. Okay. Opening chests, doing challenges, doing quests, doing events, claiming achievements, reading tutorials, so logging in, scratching your butt. Anything you do gives you <laughs> Primo Gems. And I believe that's by design so that you engage with the gacha system often. That way you are more likely to pay. And it seems like the game gives you about 20 pools per week. Which is honestly fine. Now mm -hmm. I am aware mm -hmm. that some of these are mm -hmm. one-time claims. The so chests he's, will go he says it's basically free though. He says you get all these, these are basically ra raining from the sky. So it's pretty much free. So it doesn't, it's fine. Go away, really just like some of the already set down quests or achievements. So I asked around if it is just a bait, if the currency flow will slow down later. Oh, we got an edge. We got an edge. We got edge time right now. The ad is about to run. Put it. 
careful. We had to, yeah, we gotta, it's Tom for an ad face. It is, it is running. Uh, oh, you sent me a, you sent me a track, a battle track from the summer event that I should listen to. Okay, well, we'll listen to that after the video. Alphabet, thank you for the 1,000 bits. <laughs> a contribution to the Genshin content fund. Okay, look, look, look. Yesterday, I wrote down, okay, I only wrote down the names of the characters that I need, okay? Uh, we watched all the demos, and we looked at which are the ones that I really need, okay? It's like four on here, okay? Uh, it's not that many. There's Kokomi, there's Deluxe, there's Ito, there's Nahida, uh, and then today, what do we add, like one more? Okay, that's like, that's what, was that gonna cost, like ten dollars? What's the other one? Uh, okay, okay, Candace. Okay, Aloy, when she comes back. Um, Cole. Um, that's it, that's it, that's like, well, seven, but it's it's really like six because you can't get a, you can't get Aloy right now. What about Layla? What about Layla? Did, did we like, did we like Layla? Did we like, La yeah, I like, yeah, okay, 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 Layla. Okay, Layla. Um, that's, that's, that's less than 10. So. Aloy will come back. A, she, she will come back. Of course she's going to come back. We got Call of the Mountain coming out this week. Uh, we got the Horizon game that's coming, that's coming. I'm going to play tomorrow so um yeah they you can get call it yeah that one's free okay so that one's free okay so you don't have to worry about about her uh that's it that's the only ones <laughs> i'm just checking <laughs> what was the husband though besides deluxe ayato is pretty good No, this is manageable. This is manageable. This is man. This is gonna be. This is gonna be fun. It's not gonna be that hard to get these. Uh, Fox guy. Oh yeah. You mean the? Uh, he's a puppy. Al hides him. Al hides him. Uh, Neviux, thank you for the three month resub. Okay, the ad is done. Let's pick it up where we were. And the majority of people told me no. It seems like the late game will have other systems that will help you with that. It is true that at the beginning you get a bunch of wishes for free to try and hook you in. But after that, it seems like there is still a nice and steady stream of Primo gems. So again, you really don't have to pay for this game to enjoy it. So all you have to do is calm down your horny side. What also... That's fine. That's 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 easy. That's not that's fine. It's fine. You said Kakomi Deluxe, Ido and Ahida are all five stars. So that's entirely based on when the banners run. And if you saved up enough primo gems when they're ran Well, I'm patient. How long does it take between the banners? Okay? Like how many weeks? How many months between the banners? What, like a couple months? Two months? That's nothing. It's a depends. Two weeks, three weeks, that's nothing. Do you know how much time I spend waiting between Final Fantasy patches? I'm waiting four months between every major Final Fantasy patch. Every time there's one, and then when there's a new expansion, I'm waiting even longer than that. You know how much time I waited between Stormblood fucking Shadowbringers? Like a year. Also helps is that by law, the game has to tell you <laughs> what chances you have in your wishes. If you wanna do your homework, this is the formula for all the drops. What? Now, before we move on, I have... Base probability of winning a five-star item, 0. 0.6. Five-star character, 0. 0.3. Base probability of winning... Have you ever heard about, um, uh, you know, the law of attraction stuff? Yeah, I could just do that. If you believe it, then it can, then you can manifest it. 
Like if you're convinced that you can win that you can win the lottery, uh, then 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 you will. That's how that that's you just tell the universe that you want it and you'll get it and you can't doubt it at all. You just can't doubt it at all. That way you'll get it from the law of attraction. That's if you believe it, then then you won't have to then it, you'll get it instantly to show you something that happened to me. Manifested. I keep saying that the gameplay is fun and the combat is amazing, but that could be because on literally my first ever pull in this game, this happened. I got 10, I know. How, what do I do now? What did you get? What happened? Beginner's wish. Where do I click? Click wish. Are, wait, so I wouldn't get her unless I would go to this page specifically and do the wish thingy? Wait, what did I do? I don't even know. What did I, I see his chat losing their minds. What's happening? Did I pull some, what, what's happening? Five star? Gold means five star. So is there, so I guess everyone is guessing what character I got. Oh, that's a very cool guy. Oh my god. You got to love. That's a guy with a big sword. Right away. And it's on fire. 0.6% chance. <sighs> Dude, I've been grinding wow. I've been grinding mounts that are 0.1% chance. This is fine. Yes, apparently I pulled one of the most desirable characters in this entire game from the first 10 free wishes. They, 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 look. It's because they know that he was streaming it and they were watching it and they put it in there. They knew they really had to get this guy hooked in there. It's just like what Blizzard did with me, with the TLPD. The Blizzard did this shit to me too. I've been trying to get that... I'm trying to get that dragon for like 14 years and i said i wasn't gonna go back to world of warcraft i wasn't gonna do it for not even for dragonflight and i was tr i was like i'm not gonna stream it i'm not gonna play it and then one day i'm like well i'll log in for five minutes only i'll go and log in and, and i'll sit on my my mountain it bores breath and i'm just gonna wait for five minutes and i'm gonna log out do the same thing i've been doing for 14 years and i logged in for five minutes They spawn that, they spawn the dragon. And I finally got it. I finally got it after all these years and I got hooked back in. They got me right back in. And that had happened immediately after I had told the Blizzard representative what my account email address was. How do I get in, how can I, maybe I should write an email uh, to the Genshin people and say, hi, so, uh, I'm a streamer and I'm gonna, I would really like to play your game next week. So here's my email address and, and here's my account name. So, uh, I'm not, I'm not giving this to you for any information. I just wanted to clue you in on what my plans are. Uh, but you know, I've been watching some demos and there's some characters that are, that I really do like, and, uh, maybe, I just want to tell you this. No reason, just to let you know why I'm interested. Uh, yeah, so here's a list. Uh, we got, yeah, Kakomi, Ito, uh, Deluxe, um, uh, Candace. Um, yeah, all those. Uh, if you, I, I just wanted to share that that with you. And I'll, I'll be starting. Um, here's my stream times. <laughs> Can I give you the account name too? <laughs> They just, they did it to hook him in. They did, it, I guess it worked because people say he's still playing. He's good early, but he falls to average near the end. <sighs> Unfortunately, uh, that does seem to be the case for a lot of these guys, man. They seem real promising at first and they're real good early. But I mean, as, as it goes on, they're just, just kind of putter out. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a shame, but not surprised. You get. And I quickly found that's out too bad. why he is cool. The damage is not really a big he problem does. here. 
No matter how many stars a character has, it should always be somewhat balanced. So that doesn't matter. I just quickly found out that a lot of the obstacles the game sets in front of you can be solved with him. Some puzzles need you to spread a lot of fire around. Well, he has a big fire AoE. When you are mining, a small sword mines a lot slower than a big Glymore. So of course, this guy has a big sword. And when you are mining unique stones, you need a big explosion to crack it open. Uh -huh. So of course, the big sword also I mean... causes big explosions. Also, in this game, the big sword isn't everything. speed is based on their gender and how tall they are. Taller oh. characters are faster than shorter ones, and a male character is faster than female. What? Of course, this is a tall- Wait, what? Did you just say? Why the fuck is the male character faster than the female character? I thought he had a big sword. Isn't that supposed to slow him down a little bit? Old dude. So yeah, a pretty cool character on my first pull, after which I did a second pull. But I still feel confident you don't have to pay. You get free pulls anyway, and the game is a blast regardless. Okay. Lastly, I can mention that this game also have skins. At least, I think so. Throughout the last two years, they did not release a lot of them. I wonder if it was just not that successful, so they are slowly backing away. But that's it for the game. They so should just give them for free. Our final destination. The community. Uh oh. Here I have to talk about my own experience. <laughs> Ever since I started playing Genshin, the Genshin community embraced me. And people seem to really love watching someone experience what they already know for the first time. Once again, my views on Twitch more than tripled, which is something I did not expect. This hmm. is simply insane to me. And since I'm having a blast, I think it helps the overall situation. Also, if you're having I learned fun, about people the memes can tell. like, eh -heh, or lament or balls. And as I'm going through the story, people keep spamming in my chat walls of anti spoilers. Thank you guys. And people are totally fine with me experiencing what is referred to as 1.0 moments, which means glitching through the early dungeons, <gasps> glitching through the floor, and experiencing stories where the characters don't even bother with finishing their sentences. Who dares trespass on my mountain? In the mountains. <laughs> Excuse, can you can you stop having strokes? Can you finish your lines? Foolish mortal, come forth and receive your punishment. In the can mountains. Can you finish your lines? If I got a quarter for every time this happened, I would have six quarters, which is not a lot. But god damn, why did it happen six times? So yes, I have to say the. G Listen, uh. I have have ADHD, so I'm not even gonna notice people not finishing their sentences. I will have probably just lost uh, attention by then. By the time you get to the end of the sentence, I will have already like just absorbed everything that you were gonna say. Genshin community is kind of great, but for every thousand people, there is that one guy. There is that it's one the guy. The guy who really there's hates that, it, and he can't stand anyone yeah. having fun in this game, especially. It's the people you find on Twitter out of all places. And it's oh, kind of what? funny how unlike- Wait, wait, wait. Are you telling me that people on Twitter don't want you to have fun? Wait, what the fuck? That's weird. That's not what I- <laughs> are, you, are you telling me there's people on Twitter that just spend all their time finding people that are having fun and just decide to go and just fuck it up for them? Is that- is that right? In League, the toxicity comes from around okay. the Genshin player base. Okay. It does not come from within, which is something I'm definitely not used to. Those who actually play the game are fine with it. So just keep that in mind if you ever get scared by the Genshin community. Just don't go to Twitter. That place is a hellhole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. But overall, I learned that people either That's really news love to the me. game That's or they weird. really hate the game. There is okay. no in between. And I'm curious to see if my opinion on the game changes no over time. But that's really it. So, okay. let's sum it all up. The game has some really good points. Gameplay is great. Combat is amazing. Story is very good. Besides PC, I also played Genshin on both PlayStation and mobile phone. I can tell you on PS5, the game looks gorgeous. On my phone, I could do dailies on it, but I wouldn't recommend a full playthrough on your phone. 
When it comes to the bad stuff, so far I am in the early game. And I noticed there is not a lot of challenging content. I was really hoping there would be some kind of a Dark Souls challenge, but from what people tell me, apparently there is not. Every problem can be fixed with money, even though you really don't have to. And every time I did find something challenging, it was challenging because I was... low level. So in the future I'd really love some optional harder content. But who knows, maybe the end game is gonna surprise me. Also, but he's the not only in really yet. scummy thing that you can find in Genshin is that it heavily relies on FOMO. There are events which are really cool, but the content from those events will always go away, which means that entire storylines for some of those characters just vanish. It's usually not stuff that you can buy that goes away, but it's always stuff that makes you log in and hopefully engage with the gacha system. For example, there was an event where you could get Aloy as a character for simply leveling up your adventure rank. Aloy. Aloy. Really love... I will literally do anything to get this character. We have got to get this character back. We need this character back, okay. Really. Please. Please. No, thank you. A few weeks later, the character became unobtainable. You didn't have to buy anything, you just had to log in and get tempted by all the new stuff. This is something I'll get better opinion on as I keep playing the game. But from people I learned that FOMO and events are a big drive for Genshin. Another thing I haven't experienced yet is content drought. I've heard that right before I tried Genshin for the first time, there was a bit of a break between content. But yeah. of course, I won't see that, because there is a lot of new content there for me. So I wonder if <clears> I'll <throat> also run into that issue later. And finally, because- As a new player, there is just no way to gauge this. You will not experience a content drought in any game for a very long time as a new player. It's one thing that's just absolutely fantastic about being a new player in a, in a game that has been around for more than a couple years, or just a couple of years is that uh, you are going to be busy. You're going to have a ton of stuff to do for a really, really long time. Um, like, for me, with my experience with Final Fantasy XIV, I started the game in Heaven's Word, and as a new player, I had so much to do, so many things to catch up on, so many uh, jobs to level, so many jobs to try out, all the crafting to level and try out, the uh, all the trials... Uh, mounts like all the minions I want and all this stuff and uh, eventually though after you play for a little while a few years several years rather like I've played and of course a new expansion will like give you a lot of stuff to do all over again but eventually you will get to a point where if you've been playing a game for several years and it's like a main game of yours uh, you will notice the content droughts quite a lot more because there's like there are side systems that you're already familiar with and you've already gotten a lot of what you want out of them. There uh, might be raids that you, like you're good enough at the game that you can do and get done very quickly. Um, and so like, as you get better at a game, a lot of times too, like the faster you can get through some of the content that when you were newer would take much, much longer to do. And that's kind of where I'm at nowadays with F14. Like I, I love this game and I always will. Like I'm never gonna stop playing it, um, but as I have become more seasoned and a more veteran player, I <clears throat> definitely have noticed the content droughts more than I did back in like Heaven's Order or back in Stormblood. Because I am constantly streaming Genshin, I'm doing all the grindy stuff off stream, so I can always save the main story for content. The main quests are supposed to be locked behind the adventure rank, which you're supposed to get by doing a little bit of a grind with the exploration. And of course, I'm doing all the grinds behind the streams. So I have not hit a point where the story would tell me, go off and grind. So far I managed to stay ahead with the adventure rank. So okay. I have not experienced the downsides of everything being locked behind the adventure rank just yet. We'll see if that changes later. Okay. And that's it. That's my first impression of Genshin Impact. I came here expecting some really bad stuff. Perhaps a bit of predatory stuff. And I just found an awesome game that I missed. I will definitely stick around for the anime story. And I might make 
two more Genshin videos. One where I review the entire story, and a second one to summarize my entire journey. Wow. I mean, so far, I only got through 1.0, and look at this monstrous video. I still strongly doubt I will become a full-on Genshin content creator. I don't have the experience with the world for that. Genshin was supposed to be just a one-time stop on my journey to explore all sorts of video game stories. He's hooked! At the end of the day, I am really glad I picked up this game. It's wild that he's like... <laughs> he's like... Yeah, I just plan to, you know, try it really quick. But I'm not gonna become like a full-time Genshin creator or anything. Like, how did you... How did you make a leap to the point that that was even a consideration for you? <laughs> How did you go from, oh, I'll just try it out, to, uh, well, I'm not going to be a full-time Genshin creator. What? Clearly, uh, the game, clearly it doesn't sound like you're going to drop it anytime soon. No, you don't have to be a full-time creator for it. But, uh, it's just really funny to me, like, this, uh, huge shift in your opinion that you had. Of even having bad expectations, even having very low and like concerns, uh, low expectations and big concerns about the game, it's clear that he doesn't see the gotcha pressure as being like super, super bad or difficult to avoid. And that lines up with everything that I've heard from people I know that play it. Like everything he said, uh, it, it aligns with the stuff that I've already heard. So I know that. Um, this is legit. Like, this is absolutely legit. But, uh, yeah, it sounds like he is, or he was, two, two or three weeks ago, whenever he decided to pick it up, sort of in the same headspace as I am right now thinking about it. Like, yeah, having a lot of the same sort of con uh, concerns about it and um, having sort of been sleeping on it for a few years and having already made up, had a, maybe some misconceptions about the game. So this was absolutely phenomenal review because it's like very relatable to me it's like speaks directly to the position that uh, i'm in and um makes me makes me want to try it but it also makes me a little worried <laughs> i'm also so worried